Welcome back. It is another review from your boy, Big Baby James, from the Sit In Politic Podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the applause. Bow. Or the PlayStation sound. Mix in the applause. Woohoo! We're here. We don't play games, baby. All right, we are in the building today to talk about the Wonka blockbuster of the year, of the summer. Uh, this is obviously the one that came out this year that is starring Timothée Chalamet uh, from Dune, which he killed it in Dune. I'll salute to him on that. Um, I got to check out Dune 2, which just came out, but either way, uh, he's in this, <coughs> Hugh Grant's in this. <laughs> Woo, baby. Um, no Johnny Depp, sadly. But uh, those are really the people of. No, let me see. Let me pull up here. Um, we got Kayla Lane. Shout out to her. Keegan Michael Key from Key and Peel. He was actually pretty funny in this. He's probably the best part, in my opinion. Uh, Patterson Joseph, Matt Lucas, Matthew Banton. Shout out to all these people. Sally Hawkins. Shout out to every last one of them for coming together and making this movie, which was an absolute piece of shit. Hated it. Terrible. Um, I just want to know, look, we took, we went from, we started out with Gene Wilder, amazing performance, amazing movie, charming music. Everything was beautiful about that. He's maybe a little bit bipolar. He's maybe a little tiny bit bipolar. And then we get to the point all the way now in 2024 with uh, representation and DEI in films now, and we have to hire people who are obviously schizophrenic. Hold on. Somebody's knocking at the door. Okay, and we're back. I didn't lose my train of thought. It's because somebody was knocking at the door. Um, but yeah, so we got we went from Gene Wilder, um, very I mean I guess subtle hatred of kids, Johnny Depp's. There was an all out, a downright hatred for the children as well. Possibly some stuff on the other end. It was creepy. Um, and then we yeah we got this Timothy Chalamet version, which is sh like all in out, full on. Like going through an episode of severe schizophrenia, and the man sees things that are just not there. I'm pretty sure. So we basically get to him at the very beginning. His mom, like, will make him chocolate every fucking six months, and uh, they'll split a chocolate bar between the two of them. And that was just like his love in life. This is his origin story. We want to get into Wonka's origin story for really the first time with the second film. You got to see a little bit of his dad, but completely different. The dad in this movie, I don't even remember if he was even a part of, it was in the picture. It was just the mom pressing chocolate. <laughs> and he just loved that so much that that was what his whole life was. He was coming to, excuse me, he was coming to England. Um, he had like fucking 50 bucks on him. He was coming to England. Spoiler alert. Okay, I'm going to get into some spoilers. My bad. Whoo, I said at the beginning. If you're still here, spoiler review. Um... But, uh, yeah, so he comes to England. He's got, like, 50 bucks on him. He slowly ends up getting conned out of all of his money. Goes to this hotel with these two fucking idiots there that are robbing and enslaving people. Um, this is Wonka's origin story. Just let's be, I want to make it very clear. We What we know about Wonka is he ends up becoming the biggest candy man in the world. Okay. That's what we know about Wonka. The origin story they decide to give to us. He shows up in England. He's got 50 bucks on him. He gets literally robbed and juxt out of all that money from street kids, um, uh, just vermits, peasants, literally, juxt him out of his money right off the bat. Um, and then he turns around and immediately gets enslaved by these people because he signs his contract. This little girl who is supposed to be his best friend throughout the Charlie of this film, if you will, um, and she's like, don't fucking sign it. On, like, don't sign it. Read the, no, she literally says, read the fine print. He, he immediately gets screwed out of that. Uh, terrible. Just lazy. I mean, I'm just, I guess maybe that is supposed to um, highlight how naive and trusting he is or something. I don't know. Um, but why even have him be warned at that point? 
I guess it's to create this link between him and the girl, but just fuck, it was terrible. Um, our main character is a fucking stooge, is basically. To this point, what we've learned is, wow, okay, we just landed in uh, uh, England with this guy. We have a, we have a, we have a dream, I guess we'll call it. Uh, fucking schizophrenic hallucination is what I'll call it. I don't think any of this is dreaming. I think this is happening in reality. He's fucking bugging, and he's a danger. Um, probably the best thing for society was that, you know, uh, never mind, he never came to England or something. Um, it does show him his dealings a little bit with the with the Oompa people. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, he's dealing with the uh, uh, people that are in charge of, like, basically the monopoly of chocolate in Europe. Um, the chocolate cartel. God. Literally, it's called the chocolate. If, if, if the real cartel takes offense to anything, if they want to take offense to that, I'm cool with it. Whoever has to pay for that has to pay for that, because that's fucking ridiculous, the chocolate cartel. Um, chocolate cartel, and they're just a bunch of doofuses, idiots. They want to steal Wonka shit, just like... You know, what was kind of happening in the old movies where he had to shut stuff down. Um, they're like, oh, we got to end this. You know, it gives everybody like you've seen this in the commercial where uh, he ends up giving people candy in the uh, like courtyard and everybody's just like having a uh, acid trip. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he fried his brain. Maybe he's not schizophrenic. He might have fried his fucking brain off uh, psychedelics. But um, that's what ends up happening in the courtyard. You know, you get to see the police. You get to meet. Um, key, um, and like I said, he's really funny in the film. It ends up being that he's kind of the extension of that chocolate cartel. He's the police are doing their bidding, and they're like, "Hey, no bullshit in this courtyard. No having fun. Um, also, you're not going to be able to sell your fucking chocolate here, buddy." And they enforce that. They're not bullshitting with them. The guy is getting paid uh, paid off with chocolates, ironically, um, which ends up, you know, biting him in the ass like it does all of us in the end. You know, cholesterol, fucking high blood pressure. You know, there's a there's a lot of shit that goes into that. Not great. So, um, rock with me, guys. Subscribe. Sit in politics. We're vibing. We're talking about Wonka. It fucking sucked. Um, let's see. What else did we do? The um, oh my gosh. And yeah, he's sitting here trying to pedal the shit. <laughs> he's sitting here trying to pedal the shit several times. People. And by the way, Slugworth is part of the. Chocolate Cartel, if I'm not bugging. So uh, that's one thing I want to say. Slugworth is all over the place. What was he in the book? Because I feel like they changed his character so dramatically in every film. Um, so, yeah, and this film was was really no different. Um, they end up, by the way, obviously they have to come back. They have to thwart the plans of the Chocolate Cartel to not allow people to enjoy high-quality chocolate and all that. Um, they just want to feed them their garbage chocolate. They didn't want uh, Willy Wonka to come up and, you know, make his money. This was a pro-capitalism film, 100%, from start to finish. Um, big Bake, Take Little Bake, fucking uh, all that. <laughs> But uh, no, so the um, uh, they end up taking, uh, they end up beating the chocolate cartel in the end. Um, they end up doing some really shady shit. People end up almost getting drowned in chocolate. Um, you know, there's some fun stuff that that happens around that point in the film. Um, for a lot of the film, he is just slaving away and just has to work at this fucking rundown hotel. Um, that was all a waste. The singing, by the way, we can't talk about this without talking about the singing. Um, this was fucking one of the worst parts. All the songs were terrible. Like, that's one of the main things with the Willy Wonka movies. Do not fuck up the songs. You know, like, the T Timothy Chalamet, his voice, he's an actor. I feel that. Weak, brother. It was weak as fuck. And the songs, that was the worst part. It wasn't even that his voice wasn't that inspiring because, like, Gene Wilder's wasn't that crazy in the first one either. But the songs were so fun and catchy and, like, really encapsulated the the vibe of the movie. And this, I would say, they attempt to definitely capture the vibe. But the vibe of the movie is so off, at least for me, that I think that's probably what it is. They do do a good job, if I'm being honest, to really capture, like, and be consistent with tone of the film to tone of the songs um, and tone of the music. But... In the end, I hated the tone. I hated the delivery. Like, he's... Timothy Chalamet was a fucking psychotic in this movie. Um, like, how he talked to people. 
Uh, you, like I said, you see it in the every, the trailer was, you know what I mean? The signs were there. But his, like, you know, hey, one, two, three. Oh, my God. Like, bro, his fucking weird spazzy shit was just too much. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing how that character gets to um, the next point in the story. But we'll we'll see. At the end, the climax of the movie ends up being completely unearned. Like I said, they overthrow the evil chocolate empire. This motherfucker walks over to some fucking abandoned crack house. Some crack flat in... Uh, uh, shit just starts getting put together, brother. You know what I mean? Like things just start to to work out for him. He shows up there. He's like, okay, hey, I. Which, by the way, okay, I will say, this is when he sings uh, the song from the uh, original movie, and this is the best. That's what I'm saying is I don't blame his voice, and I don't think that was as much of a factor because when he played, when he sung just the like a good song at the end of the movie, um, the imagination fucking song, it was great. <coughs> awesome you know what i mean i didn't like like i didn't like that we like there was no there was no working to get to that point in the movie he literally just walked up to a fucking broken down crack house and was like okay you're now a chocolate water fountain and that's a water fountain now you're fucking mushroom rabbits so now they're mushroom rabbits you're gonna be a fucking uh twizzler uh that's made of t fucking twix i don't know like he, he was just making shit happen with his mind, which once again, this is, I think, I think he was going through another episode. It was a really traumatic experience. I think he just went through and all of a sudden, you know, some shit started to take over. He lost his friend because, you know, she ended up getting adopted or some shit at the end. And he was like, okay, yeah, go, go live your life. Have fun. You're not, oh no, she, he brought her back to his, her, her mom. That's what it was. Her mom was like in some, like at the hospital or some shit, um, which I guess she didn't give, she wasn't even looking for her kid that was fucking enslaved down the street, whatever. Like I said, this movie was dog shit. They didn't think about any of this. But at the end, he's like, hey, go be with your mom. Runs and goes, and he's like, okay, I'm going to be with my mom. Or she's going to be with her mom now. He's a little, he's like, I'm happy about that, but I'm bummed by that. I was like, okay, cool. And then we get into imagination, can make anything happen, and he does do that. Um, let's see here. What else was there? Uh, oh, the fucking Oompa Loompas. Yeah, that was dog shit as well. Um... Maybe if Hugh Grant was in it more, I would have liked it. Because, like, what he was trying to do, I kind of enjoyed. Uh, but then then at the end when, you know, we find out how Willy Wonka gets his, you know, gets the the, the cheap help. Um, they end up just fucking destroying it. And it's like, basically, they have to find some way around it where, you know, it's not fucking slavery. You know, they did everything they could to really get away from that. Um vibe from the old movies um he ends up getting into some serious contract negotiations with hugh grant there at the end and they end up agreeing to something that they could all be happy with and um yeah he's gonna pay him he's gonna pay him in fucking chocolate still though so enjoy that um overall though you know just not a great movie i had very high expectations i think as far as kids i have kids so um stuff it's not easy to find stuff to watch with them that you find that you feel is like completely appropriate and safe. And this was that. Um, and I'm not, I don't believe that I'm knocking it for that. Cause I really, there's a lot of kids movies and stuff like that, that I really have enjoyed with, with my kids. Um, but this, I feel like just met, missed the mark. It like did that. It, like Timothy Chalamet in this, it sounded like when somebody like, tries to talk to kids and they think like the way that kids want to be talked to is like a fucking idiot like they're really high yeah so uh one two three uh, fucking light light bulb ching 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 right like what the fuck she's 13 years old you know what i mean like there's there i had a lot of issues with it so <laughs> um and then like i said the songs that was probably my biggest issue because that's some of the most memorable content from definitely the first film um were the Oompa Loompa songs in this movie. They obviously, this is a prequel, so the Oompa Loompas don't even get songs. Um, except at the end, by the way, the end credit scenes, which might have been the best fucking part of the film, was uh, they had in the end credits Oompa Loompas doing their fucking Oompa Loompa music shit. Um, it was like, th that works. You know what I mean? I, I don't know why Timothy Shelley, he couldn't just already have the fucking factory going. We didn't need to see that. Maybe... We could have seen maybe a story about, you know, him going bad, people trying to steal his shit out the factory, which is what had been alluded to in the other two uh, Wonka movies that dealt with the whole golden ticket thing. Um, in the previous movies, it had been alluded to that they'd shut down the factory because workers and spies were getting in and stealing that good shit. 
So we ended up getting this um, garbage come up story. But like I said, there's no come up. You don't really, you don't go along with him really on any kind of come up. You definitely don't feel like at the end he's earned a fucking chocolate factory and, and you know, 60% of the market share of the chocolate business. Um at the end, you're kind of just like, well, like I said, just like, what the fuck? Like, at the end, when he's dancing around, like, and once again, still one of the best parts of the movie because it, they take the old Gene Wilder song. Um, just really, you know, you're just kind of left with, I know this is where we were going to land eventually, but, like, how did we really get there from where we were at in this story? You know what I mean? Because you're along the ride with him being enslaved and all this stuff. It felt like I was watching, like, Big Fat Liar or something. The Frankie Muniz fucking classic, okay? It felt like that, where it's like Wonka's ambition in this was just all about, like, I need to get back at those guys and, like, screw them over somehow. And I, he achieved that, but that doesn't lead to, okay, now at the end of this, I, I have a completely high, highly functional, magical fucking chocolate factory that works on dreams. Like, yeah, that's just, I don't know. I... Uh, you know, if you couldn't get to that part in a way that made any sense, then just start at that point. Like every other fucking movie decided to do, you know what I mean? If like your explanation on, cause I mean, how the fuck did he get the funds? And you know what I mean? We got to get into the practicals, you know? So those are adults watching this shit. I'm like, how's he even, does he own that land? I'm confused. You know what I mean? But Either way, he should have been in the hospital that, that uh, his friend's mom was working at. Uh, best part of the movie, though, in my opinion, was prob probably uh, Keegan-Michael Key. He was funny consistently. At some point, he doesn't want to work with them, the chocolate guys, and then he doesn't want to work for the cartel, and then he's like, oh, okay, I will, because they're going to give him a lot of chocolate. And then he ends up showing up, and he's like, you know, crazy fat, and it's, it's a thing. So, I mean, it's funny. Um, everywhere else... You know, nothing really stuck out. I did I did think Hugh Grant was kind of funny. You know, Hugh, Hugh Grant is funny, and his humor is humorous, and he has good comedic delivery and all that. So I do think the movie would have benefited by him being in it a little bit more. And the Oompa Loompas are interesting characters. If we got some more on their whole story, then I think that probably would have been good. Um, instead, they wanted, you know... Uh, Willy Wonka to be the the beggar chocolate maker in this and just be running around and just doing nonsense. So, yeah, not impressed. I'm sure I'll check out whatever else comes out from this because I'm a fan of the uh, franchise in general. I, even the Johnny Depp one, to be honest, I didn't like when I was a kid. And I remember people really hating that. And it came out and I was pretty young. Um, but I've watched it again as an adult. And I have to say, actually, I appreciate that one more now <clears throat> for what it is. I still don't think it's better than the Gene Wilder, uh, Willy Wonka. I think that really nailed it. And just from everything, from the wholesomeness, which came off as like, maybe we're just such a, we're so fucking jaded as a society that trying to do that when Timothy Chalamet tried to do it in this movie, it came off as like, you know, don't be, <laughs> don't be wholesome. I don't want that from you at all. You know what I mean? Not that I want him to be a fucking freak and be running around here fucking licking people's faces or anything crazy. But I'm just saying like the over the top, like really nice wholesomeness. It was for me in this movie, it was cringe. A lot of it was cringe. The music in this was just very disappointing. The only time that really the music got like grabbed my attention was when, and once again, when they're when he's going through his uh, psychotic break, and uh, you know the entire his entire vision is coming true in front of his face, based off imagination. That was the song performance and stuff was like it was good and made me feel a little emotional, made me feel you know the nostalgia for the previous one. So it was a little bit of a cheap trick there, um, but that's what I'm saying. When they tried to do it on their own, they weren't able to accomplish it, in my opinion. So uh, that's just what it is. Uh, but let me know if you want to hear more conversations like this. Uh, this is your boy, Big Baby, with the Sin Politic Podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Go follow us everywhere. Um, Spotify and Insta... Uh, stop that. Spotify and iTunes, actually. Go find us there for full episodes of the podcast where I chop it up. I chop it up with different individuals. Uh, sometimes I hop on there and I just go crazy like this for a long time by myself. Um, 
But either way, go subscribe everywhere for that. Go find us on social media. Hit me up if you want to collaborate or just want to chop it up. I'd love to hear from any of you guys out there that enjoy the content. I appreciate you all for tuning in. Appreciate you all for uh, supporting this content. It means everything. And uh, right now on YouTube, we're fucking fighting a fucking shadow ban like crazy, these bastards. But um, we are about to hit a 1,000 subs. Either way, it doesn't matter. Can't stop us, baby. Can't stop us. Can't hold us back. Uh, can't stop, won't stop. That's what it is. Make sure you show some love. Subscribe. Get in the comments. Let me know what you thought of Wonka. What was your favorite part? Did you think it was terrible like me? What was your favorite uh, Wonka film? Actually, let me say that before I hop off here. Now we'll hop off here. So the number one, Gene Wilder. I actually will put the Johnny Depp film above this one 100 percent because the johnny johnny depp film i think was funnier um if you go back and watch it like i said as an adult he is really cooking those kids like uh, anything they have to say he is shitting on them um i didn't realize that as much on the first one uh i'm uh first time around i mean and um yeah, I think it has its own unique thing it's trying to do. I think that movie also really fails with the Oompa Loompas. Um, but some of the songs are actually kind of interesting. And um, and they really handcuff themselves a lot to the original because it's like basically the exact same story, just tweaked. Um, so even that, though, I feel like did a better job um, representing whatever that, whatever the kind of like Wonka... Uh, uh, experiences that we're looking for. Um, this was kind of like a, a, a hodgepodge. I mean, I appreciate that they did their own thing. And this one might've even felt like the most like true to like a, um, uh, kind of, like I said, like a wholesome experience. I think the actual execution of all of it from writing, um, to how the, the, lead specifically um deliver the performance i think that's where it really missed but the tone of like you know the aesthetic that i guess i guess the director would have been more setting that up i think that actually kind of hit it a little bit closer to home than the story itself did the writing but i mean the like the costumes the wardrobe for like timothy shawley that was really dope you know the really deep purple a lot of times being shown there was cool you know the look was great um the look of the area the town was really cool um it just looked like it you know could exist in a fucking world where there's some like mad scientist chocolate maker so um there's a lot of promise there i just like really the main thing is you know this wonka is the king of cringe and that really came through it was cringe 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 so uh that was my biggest issue with it um make sure you show some love and subscribe and let me know what you think and you know i'll accept that either way um, I appreciate you for tuning in, watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Give me a like, share the video with uh, other people that enjoy, enjoy movies, may want to get involved in some kind of conversation like this, and much love to y'all. Have a great day.